back. Today we're going to talk about uh, point defects, kroger vink notation, and Schottky and Frankel defects. Um, so when we're dealing with um, point defects, zero D defects, and ionically bonded crystals, we need to kind of always remember that um, these defects will also have kind of an associated charge. So for example, when I have, uh, basically, let's look at NaCl, 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 you're kind of getting the picture. Na, Cl, Na. Here, this is plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. And again, hopefully you'll see that I have uh, basically charge neutrality here. Or actually, shouldn't I'm a, a little bit over, but again, in the perfect crystal, I'm going to have an equal number of Na plus one and Cl minus one, so that eventually the net charge of my perfect crystal is going to be zero. But um, you can see here I have cations here, anions here, and you can see that they have a charge associated with that. So if I create, a, if I had point defects uh, in my uh, basically perfectly ionic, ionically bonded crystal, basically in my, ion, in my ionic crystal, let's say, for example, I have a cation vacancy. So let's say I take this material here and I remove it. So no more and a plus one there. So what does that do to my crystal? Well, I, let's look at this particular site. So now I went from initially when my Na plus one there, the charge on this site was plus one. When I create a vacancy, when I remove that, I go from plus one to zero. What is the change then, the net change in my, you know, the basically the electronegativity, or not the electronegativity, excuse me, the uh, the charge on my uh, perfect crystal. Well, I went from plus one to zero, so now I have a net negative charge of my one. I've lost basically this kind of. I I changed my charge from I, initially on this side it was plus one. Now without that extra plus one ion here, I'm at a negative one. You know, there's a net negative charge here. Alternatively, let's go ahead. Let's say I remove. A Cl. So again, initially at this site, I was minus one. Now I've gone to zero. So when I have an anion vacancy, I go from plus one. So the vacant site will then have a net positive charge. And we need to be able to kind of describe these point defects. And how are we going to charge compensate? Because we need to make sure that our crystals are always, on average, we need to make sure that they are. Um, Electro neutral. Basically, a net charge of zero. So, one of the ways that we do that is with this Kroger Vink notation. So, KV notation, not to be confused with Kelvin Boyd uh, notation as well. <laughs> but, anyways, um, so in Kroger point notation, we use this kind of notation here this X, Z, and then Y right here. So, X, this kind of, you know, Screw it. This is uh, basically denotes what is on site currently. So this can be either a vacancy, so we denote that by capital V. This could be again iron, copper, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it could be a vacancy, but if it's occupied by an element, it's just going to be that element as well. So that's what you're typically going to kind of see here. But X is what on the is on the site currently. That's kind of the key thing here. Y is basically what type of site ideally in perfect crystal. So this means it could be again, it could be an element, so it could be iron copper, or it could be an interstitial site. So if you see this kind of little I. That's an interstitial. So can this ever be a vacancy? No, a vacancy can never be on here. Why is that? Because we don't know uh, basically where a vacancy will, you know, in a perfect crystal, we know that there's some equilibrium concentration of vacancies, but we don't know where those sites are. So that can never be a vacancy there. So that's kind of the key point uh, there. So I interstitial or by an element. And then Z is just gonna be the charge relative to your normal, you know, site. So it's going to be, again, that, uh, basically, 
it is going to be the charge relative to the normal ion charge on the site Y. So once we've replaced something with what it's on currently, we're going to compare this to this, and we're going to get the change. Z is going to give us the change, the delta. Z is going to equal the delta chain or change in charge from uh, basically X and Y. So we're going to see that with an example here. So if you see a prime, that's going to be negative. X is just going to be zero. And we're going to use dots right here. Dots are going to be positive. Um, so one of the first ways we can get started uh, is by thinking about two idealized or two intrinsic. Intrinsic, so basically uh, within itself, so not looking at um, kind of impurities, two types of intrinsic defects, which are Schocky and Frankel defects. So a Schocky defect is going to uh, basically consist of charge compensating anion and cation vacancies. So let's look at uh, you know, well, you can see here for uh, KCL, but let's look at NC NACL. NACL. So if I want to do my Schocky defect, I'm going to go null. So I need vacancy. Vacancy in the cation and vacancy in the anion. So my cation vacancy is going to be Na. My anion is going to be Cl. What happens again? So let's look at this. X and Y, right? So normally I have Na. So normally that site is Na1+. plus. Then I go from here to here. What's the change going from y to x? So I've gone from basically a charge of 1 plus to a charge of 0. So what's that change? Minus 1. Minuses are given by primes. So I'm going to get this charge here. What about Cl? Cl minus 1. So again, I'm going from what's from here to here. I'm going this one direction. I'm going from minus 1 to zero. So I mean, that's a gain of plus one. So that's just a dot. So you can see here, oops, as my <laughs> uh, pen drops, that's my expression. So I'm creating these vacancies. Now, one of the critical points of all Kroger meet notation, I need to make sure I am electroneutral. So look at negative one charge plus a positive one charge means I'm electroneutral at the end of the day. Let's see, what if I had C Let's see, I had CaCl2. So how to do this? So again, I go null, vacancy in Ca, plus vacancy in Cl. I already know that one. I've done that before, but now there's just two of them because, again, two chlorines. What about Ca? So again, what's the change in charge from here to here? I'm going from 2 plus to 0. So that's going to be minus. But look at, again, minus 2 charge. 2 multiplies by everything here. So I need to make sure that I have both, again, electro neutrality, or you know, I'm electro neutral. Uh, so I'm electro neutral here, and I'm also mass balanced here. NaCl. Look at here. Minus two plus two Ca two Cl's mass balance charge balance. You can see here, same thing for titanium. So if I'm drawing the, the Schocky defects here, it is going to be oxygen. Again, going from two minus. From here, so that's going to be adding two, so two, two, four, there it is. So, what about Frankel defects? A Frankel defect occurs when we move from a normal site into an interstitial site. Um, so, we leave behind a vacancy, so we leave behind a vacancy when you go on to an interstitial. So, let's look at let's look at LiO, let's, well, let's, let's go to UO2. So, UO2, let's also go to um, let's do NaCl again. So if I'm looking at uh, the cation Frankel defect, so again, one of the unique things about Frankel defects is you could have a cation and anion defect. So for NaCl, for the cation, I'm going to have Na, Na here. That's going to go, again, so I'm going to put an Na onto an interstitial site. So what's the charge initially at the interstitial site? Zero, right? When I put an Na, I'm going to go from zero to one plus. So that charge is going to be plus one. So that is going to be a dot here. And I'm going to leave behind a vacancy in Na. Again, plus one to zero, minus one. Good. What about for Cl? Cl, Cl, X goes to Cl on an interstitial. That's going to be negative plus a vacancy in Cl, which is going to be this. 
same thing. And you can see the same going for UO2 here. So for U, again, I know that charge is plus four. So on an interstitial site, plus four, but the vacancy leaves behind minus four. Oxygen, same thing here. So those are your, basically, <laughs> uh, and you could have, again, we need to, the key thing is here, we need to have charge and mass balance, electroneutral and mass balance. Electro, you know, uh, charge balance, mass balance. Those are the key things that we're, when you're working with, um, basically these defects. So we have, de uh, congratulations, you are now experts in intrinsic, basically, again, remember, these are intrinsic uh, kroger mink notation. So KV notation for Schocke and Frankel defects. So next time we're going to get into uh, basically impurities in Kroger Mink, it's extrinsic. So we'll see you all next video and we'll do some fun mass balance and equations. See you then. Thanks. Bye.